You know me, dog. That's my fucking realm. I'm I'm from the world that I die. Mean, nah, if you're gonna come, you how are you gonna bust somebody's balls when they're alive, then walk into his wake? Not when I'm alive. Not on my fucking clock. And I went off, and that reputation followed me in L.A. People don't mess with me because I went off. I made the guy leave. I told him, I'm going to get off this stage. And when I get off this stage, I'm going to go at you, your attorney, and your wife. And I meant it. I didn't care. I, in my world, where I come from, that's, I'm fucking nuts. But I work very hard for people who don't see that. I work very hard. I avoid a lot of contact with people. I already know this. I knew this at 30. I knew when I got out of prison that well, that was one thing for me to do what I was doing as a comedian that I had to calm that down because, and that's why I avoid it. I avoid it, number one. Number two, when something happens, I attack that situation right off the bat so it doesn't eat away at me. Can't eat away at me because if I let it eat away at you and I see you, then it's going to be bad for you. It's going to be really fucking bad for you. So I can't let it eat away on me. I really can't. I get fucking hot. So I got to call you at your house and go, Abe, dog, this is the situation. And if you hang up on me, then I'm going to go to your house and light it on fire. <laughs> That's how crazy I am. That's how fucking nuts I am. And I, it's just, I don't want to hit nobody. I just don't want nobody going to eat. I don't like, I'm from old school. You don't even, if, what's the, my favorite line in The Godfather is, they should have met, they should have stopped, stopped Hitler, Hitler in Munich. Munich. They, if they would have stopped in Munich, we wouldn't have had this fucking problem. But, and that's what I'm, that's why I go crazy. And I've worked very hard to eliminate that from my life, you know, to eliminate that, uh, whatever. So that's the craziness I have. But it's a thin line. It's the same craziness that fueled me to keep doing what I do because my thing that fuels me is I'm proving a fucking point to you. I'm proving a point that when we went and told people that we were going to be comedians, they told me I was a felon. They told me I was too old. They told me it was too hard. They told me a thousand reasons why. But I believed in myself. And I also believed that if they knew about my life and who I was inside, it would help me. And that's that craziness is what keeps me waking up every morning to prove my point, that anybody could do what the fuck I do. You know, everybody tells you you can't do this. You put limitations on yourself. This morning I got in the car. I was going to go to jiu-jitsu. And in the car this morning, I was talking myself out of it, Rudy. Talking myself out of it. But then that Cuban voice... That says about not seeing God and all those bad words came and I fucking shot down the Beverly Hills. So that crazy, you're right. That crazy is what fuels me. What brought the conversation up was we had lunch one day and you had said to me that in the music business, there's a thin line between mental health and the artist. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing in comedy. I mean, you're right. What makes somebody get up and say, I'm going to fucking live three or four years in this life of sleeping in floors? You know, and everybody's done it. If you listen to oh, Guns N' Roses, yeah, yeah. Slag, yeah, you know, yeah. Aerosmith. Everybody's fucking paid that price where you got to eat a bug one day. Yeah. You got to eat a Coke snot. That's it. That's all there is. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. But you know what? Like, like you, I, you know, I know you, and I used to hang out with Sam Kinison and a bunch of other... Um, Jimmy Schubert, who did this yeah, show Jimmy, a couple Jimmy Schubert and comedians and... All you guys, as crazy as you are, you guys are the nicest people, most generous people I've ever known. Sam was, out of his mind, generous. I mean, like, beyond, I mean, it was, like, embarrassing generous, you know, type of a guy. So it's, again, going back to being crazy, it's not about being evil. None it's of that It's about not, not knowing any boundaries. No boundaries. You know, Who gives a fuck? you're limitless to what you really want to achieve in life, you know. Now, were you, were you there the night that Sam and uh, Billy Idol went on it? Oh, God, I was on stage. What yeah, happened? The, uh, what uh, the was... fuck happened? <laughs> <laughs> Caesar's Palace uh, in Las Vegas uh, is, is very simple. Uh, Sam was, you know, he used to do two shows a night. So on the first show, he, he hadn't gone to sleep for about two or three days. You know, so we were up as sweet. Uh, Lenny Bruce's uh, uh, mother mom was there because she always hung out with Sam and uh, you know and, and the whole gang the uh, Carla Bow uh, Lenny Bo, Clark yeah, yeah. Mitchell Walters yeah. Yeah. Alan Stephan Alan know, Stephan uh, yeah all of the Jimmy Schubert you know Jimmy all those Shub guys and uh, <laughs> so Sam used to bring on stage Sabrina and Malika, Malika who became Malika became his wife and Sabrina was his sister-in-law right and they would be dressed like showgirls 
you know, Las Vegas showgirls outfits with the feathers because they used to be showgirls before they met. So we're on stage doing, playing a Wild Thing, you know, the song. And Billy Idol is there, you know, and he's on stage doing his Billy Idol thing and he starts grabbing Malika and Sam, which just has a, you know, he went nuts, you know. So we get off the stage, go back up to his uh, suite and he's like throwing shit around and <laughs> he's just like going insane. He's saying, next time on the next set, I'm going to fucking deck up, you know, on stage, when, you know, all of that. So second show comes around and he does his his comedy and then we do our our our, our song and billy was gone but his his uh, sidekick was there so sam just decked his friend because he couldn't get to billy and that was and that, that's what happened caesar's palace that must have been fucking listen the reason why i got into comedy was after i read the lenny bruce book mm -hmm. i was wafering like i was wafering i didn't know what i was gonna do with my life I was leaning towards comedy, but once I read Ladies and Gentlemen, mm. I knew it was for me. And when I was seeing all that, I mean, uh, when I was watching Sam go crazy, and I knew he had the outlaws and the craziness and the fucking hotels and the crashing cars, that was another part that lured me to this craziness. It's, it, it really is craziness. When you were there, when you were part of this, were you looking around saying to yourself, this is just insane that this guy's a comic yeah, yeah it was playing more, fucking music and it was more insane than any musician i ever been around yeah it was beyond rock and roll it was comedian crazy <laughs> richard pryor stuff you know it, it was level you know it wasn't yeah and, and you're talking to a guy who, who was in the same band with ozzy i played with ozzy but no sam kinison was more crazy than, than ozzy yeah i can't even imagine that yeah shit. yeah this morning I was driving yeah. and they were talking about the Pink Floyd album, the new Pink Floyd album. Did you hear it yet? I haven't listened to it. But the beauty of it was that two weeks ago that fuck Roger Waters came up and said, I have nothing to do with this album. You know? And you have, in a band, you have these four people and there's always this one little ego that floats around, but he controls it or he doesn't. To me, these egos destroy the music business with their craziness. One is Roger Waters. I don't know. I, you know, I've never met David, David Gilmour. I, I don't know how crazy he is or the rest of the guys. I don't know what happened, but I know it. When I think of crazy ego, I think of Roger Waters and I think of Sting. As much as I love Sting and as much as I love the police, you know.